In astronomy, for example, we're learning about what the ancients thought about the cosmos and how they thought how they thought the cosmos was ordered. And in philosophy, we're learning about Socrates and how he thought that the soul was ordered as well, and that you know an orderly soul was the basis for friendship with men and friendship with the gods. It was this search for order that led the ancients to become astronomers in the first place. Chesterton has helped me with very clear thinking and just slowing down and really looking at a text or really looking at a, like a geometrical proof. I get to prove it for myself and it's really dignifying. They get them to be inquisitive. They have Socratic discussions. So they really learn how to dig deep and ask the, the bigger questions behind things. What students get every day is faith and reason coming together. And it's inspiring because they see that there are reasons to believe, there are reasons to understand and hope and appreciate. And what happens is they see life, they see learning as this great adventure. From the first moment that I met people involved with the Chesterton Network, I could tell that there was just something different about it. Not only with what was actually being taught, but just the manner and the disposition of the people speaking to me. I could tell that there was a certain fire in their eyes. They had a certain passion about not just teaching, but forming people. In classical education, we're using the methods that have withstood the test of time. The students are drawn into a conversation with the greatest minds from history and they are encouraged to enter that conversation and to contribute to it themselves. The way that they're being taught to reason through things, it naturally builds them into better, more confident speakers, and it helps them develop their faculties of reason. Every subject that we teach here at Chesterton has some relevance to the divine reality. When we teach the classical curriculum, we do so in a way that draws the wisdom of the ancient world into the modern age, places it in comparison with contemporary writers, and ultimately makes it something relevant to our lives today. We recovered the classical curriculum in order to create saints in the modern world. Art has a vocabulary. It has elements that are very important. It's line, shape, color, form, texture. It's perspective and space. And if somebody doesn't have that language, then they can't express themselves visually, which is a really important trait for human beings, is to express and understand the visual world. We learned how to make ellipses, and now we're using the ellipses to put cylinders and cones into perspective in relation to a vanishing point or in relation to the horizon. It all makes sense. I've noticed that our two children are a lot happier. I see that there's much more peace in them, a confidence. They are growing intellectually. They are learning about goodness. They're learning about beauty. The liberal arts are seven arts by which humans engage with reality. They are comprised of the trivium, grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and the quadrivium, music, astronomy, arithmetic, and geometry. And the liberal arts give the students the tools to learn. They don't just give the students the content, but they teach them how to read, how to think, how to speak. The students that move into college afterwards are excellent students, generally come out on top, Wonderful communicators with the teachers, wonderful writers, very much involved in discussions in college and, and very much impress the professors and administrations. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordia, Vita Lucero, Expes Nostra Salve, 
Our music class teaches us how to read music and how to sing. But at the same time, it teaches us how to talk because you learn how to breathe in the right way and how, and that helps you in speaking. I really like the daily mass actually. I used to be a little bit annoyed about it, but I came to really enjoy it every day because sometimes if I was having a hard day, I was just exhausted and worn out. It was really nice to just be able to go into mass and be there and just not have to do anything or think about anything and just get to sit there and pray and be with God. When this came together, it came together through the Chesterton Academy model. It's a proven model. And so for us, we had prayed our whole lives to, through our 10 children going to school for something like this. And then all of a sudden, everything lined up. We were able to be a part of starting it. And it's exciting, very exciting. I think the teachers, from the headmaster to the humanities, to the arts, to the dean of students, they're all joyful. They create a joyful environment. And that permeates to the children. They're joyful. Every single day, along with all the teachers, with all the faculty, and all the board members, I get to be a missionary to these students. I get to help build a community here. I get to help affirm their dignity on a daily basis. It is an incredibly high calling. What a gift. Finally, this was a school that shared the same mission that we had as a family, that wanted to instill in the students a love for God first, and second, a deep desire to know and to explore knowledge and to learn to think critically. All of those things we feel are the only way our kids going to survive in this world and make it in this world is to be someone who is deeply in love with God and seeks His will for their life and then knows how to navigate this world and everything coming at them through that lens. These kids are prepared for life. They are going to be productive people in society, whether it's with the Silicon Valley economy, or in their families, or in a religious life. We want our students to pursue goodness, beauty, and truth for their own sake. And then the utility that naturally springs from those will bear its fruit in their lives. No matter what field they go in, they're going to have that big picture. But they also know, right, that their efforts should be oriented to something greater than themselves. And they've got a role that they've been created for and that only they can fulfill.